Okay, today I'm going to be doing a video review on my very first, very first major client build. Uh, my previous video showed a bunch of boxes behind me. Well, after many hours of work, a hurt finger that, good thing my wife is a nurse, she was able to save, and basically just a lot of work, a lot of hard work. All those boxes turned into what you see behind me. Uh, this computer is awesome. It scores greater than 30K on uh, Vantage Extreme set settings. Uh, it has a dedicated physics cards, triple GTX 480s, and SLI. It is really an amazing computer. In some respects, it's better than my uh, quad SLI computer because it, it has a more finished feel to it. Uh, it looks really nice. Of course, that is because the 800D is such a nice case. The Mountain Mods case that I have is nice, but it's nothing like this. So let's go ahead and get right into it. Okay, here's a good look at the outside of the case. Uh, he chose a red theme, but with a blue coolant. And that's what we have here. There's the excellent coolant ERM 2K3 UCU, the copper version, which it looks incredible. Uh, so let's go ahead and start at the top. He chose the AeroCool fan controller, which is a very good fan controller except for the viewing angle. It's the only thing I find I don't like about it. Now I've set up all the exhaust fans under number one, which you can control the speed of those. I tie my exhaust and fans together because why would you want to change the uh, speeds of individual fans? It just doesn't make any sense. And then number four is the speed of all my intake fans which most of my intake fans are 800 or the bigger 120s or 140 millimeter fans so the RPMs on them are a little bit less. Over here are the programmable temperature sensors and I went ahead for system. Uh, that is the system that's a temperature inside the case which is 32C and then I have uh, under hard drive because there's no other setting for intake temperature that is room temperature basically that's the temperature of the air going into the case so both those are uh, uh, good things to know. Below it I got the ASUS uh, Blu-ray Blu drives and then below that is the hot swappable bays which I actually do not have anything mounted in those because of the way that the uh, hot swappable bays are only serial ATA 2.0. I have all my hard drives mounted here in the bottom. So there's the front of the 2K3 UCU and like I said it's awesome. Now the difference between the one I have and this one is you can actually turn the water off or leave it running. There's my hurt finger. Uh, from the front of the unit. And then also below it is the you can turn the light off if you want if you want a dark room. So that that is a very good feature, especially when you are filling the system. You can actually uh, run the water and you can leave the power off to the computer. So in case you do have a leak, it isn't going to ruin anything. Okay, let's get this uh, side panel off. Okay, taking the side panel off, which of course the 800D is an excellent case to get the side panel off quickly, and that's what I've done there. Okay, and there it is. Let's get a close up of what we got going on here. Okay, under there is a 980X, and uh, I'm using the Coolamps CPU 360 block and it's an excellent block and there are the GTX 480's and see how I put the uh, red LEDs in there let me see if I can get a look at the bottom here oh, there we go so there's a good look at those now in the video it's actually looking pink to me but in person the red is as red as can be so it, it is not pink and then down there is a PNY 9800 GT because the ASUS uh, card that I bought was defective and I had to send it back. So let's go ahead and talk about Waterloop. You all remember my dual 5970 setup. Well, this is, uh, this is similar, except I'm using panel barbs here. If you can see that, they're actually locked against the case. You can't move them. So they're quick disconnects locked to the case. So the panel is a better way to go. The inlet is going to be the upper and so here is the inlet and there's a temperature sensor it gives the temperature of the coolant and I have a 90 degrees here if you look at the bottom of that how 
uh, clean it looks compared to what I had before. I had like the swooped in coolant or the tubing, where this is a straight 90 right here. And that was my friend's idea, by the way. And so here I got a 90, and it goes up through the hole in the case. And I have a 45 degree angle here. Uh, all compression fittings were used except in the bottom of this case here because that has to be, that cannot be a compression fitting there. And so if you follow the coolant up, it goes into the bottom GTX 480 through it, through the middle GTX 480, then out so of the, the top. coolant then comes out the top and goes into the center of the CPU, which is where it has to go. And then I have the outlet coming out here, and it goes all the way down to another compression fitting. And then uh, there's another 45 degree. And I've added a flow uh, meter right there, and you can see it spinning. And it actually is a really nice flow meter. You can really tell that the water is flowing. It does have a little bit of a noise to it, though. It's a little bit of a, a noise. You may be able to hear it on the video. I go through the bottom. I got some extensions here to make the, uh, the tubing level. And then it goes on out the back to the 2K3U. In the bottom there, you see that I have the Silverstone 1500 watt Strider. Now, in the video that uh, where I had all the boxes, I'd also bought a uh, supplementary power supply for the five and a quarter bay, and I, it turns out I did not have to use it. With everything overclocked, uh, which the CPU right now is at 4.3 gigahertz, and uh, the voltage on it is is pretty low for that. So it's a very good chip I have in there. Uh, and the cards clocked at 875 and 2000 uh, core and memory respectively. Running Furmark, the system pulls from the wall just over 1500 watts. Which, uh, if this power supply is 85% efficient, which is what it's advertised to be, that ends up being about 1300 watts as it's output. So that's about 200 watts of buffer room and I think that is enough because nothing uh, stresses the system as Furmark does. So in games it's pushing about you know 800 maybe 900 watts and so that's definitely enough for that power supply. So I did not have to use that supplemental power supply. Under there is uh, the Corsair Dominator GT memory. It's 6 gigabytes at DDR3 2000. The timings are 89824. And then if you look at all the wiring, I use the modular or the unisleeve cabling. Now I have them tied up there, and that's pretty much maybe just for shipping. It looks good. Now all the fans are red. You can see the intake fan. Behind this fan right here is the SSD and the Velociraptor. And there's also another fan that I installed behind this panel, uh, even though there's nothing there, just to give a little bit of airflow. And then at the top, you can see all the red fans up there. And I also have two UV lights up there, which lights up the uh, the coolant and the tubing, which you will see when I turn the lights out the here. This and is then where I have one the UV light really light. looks awesome. Let me get the lights. I don't know how well it's going to show uh, on this video, but in person, it is awesome looking. And I can't get it completely dark in this room because it's in the middle of the day. And so let's just have a look right there. So the red really does light up well. Very, very clean build. I hate to say it, I did it. So let me go ahead and get the lights turned back on. So this build is is excellent. Uh, like I said, it was around ten thousand uh, dollars. That includes, you know, my part of it. Uh, I'm going to be shipping this very soon and I'm kind of worried about the shipping, but what I may do is unhook the GTX 480s and then have the uh, my friend put them in when it, when it arrives in Sweden. So uh, that's probably the best bet. I think that's what we may do. And I forgot to note now that I'm just looking at it because I'm not perfect is I also have, there's the X5, the X5 is in there. Uh, as far as benchmarks so far, this thing gets over 30K in Vantage Extreme. Uh, in Heaven 2.0, it kicks butt. I can't remember exactly what the average frame rate is, but it is very, I mean, it, it's top of the line. Uh, some of the other benchmarks like Cinebench 
and the Addo benchmark for the hard drive, it excels in every benchmark. So I think my computer was scoring about 38,000 in uh, uh, 3D Mark Vantage, and this is scoring just above 30, so this is an excellent build. So hopefully you all have enjoyed this video. Uh, hopefully I will be able to send this pretty soon, and uh, my friend in Sweden will enjoy it, and be, heck, we'll be able to play Left 4 Dead 2 together or some uh, Bad Company 2. So I'm looking forward to that. Thank you very much, and uh, please subscribe.